Come on. Back in. Some of you guys may be wondering what it's like to take care of a goat on a daily basis. In collaboration with a bunch of other channels, uh, we are doing this video on our daily goat routine. For me, my day starts off at around 6.15, 6.30. I usually leave a crack in my window about that wide. And around 6.15, Evie, st Evie starts yelling, cue Evie, Evie starts yelling for her breakfast and to be milked. So I get up between 6.15 and 6.30, I let the chickens out. And then I start getting ready for milking Evie. Uh, I milk her first thing in the morning right after chickens. Now the very first thing that I do is I get my uh, teat dip solution ready. And this is a about a tablespoon of bleach and about a, a little splash of Dawn and really hot water. I take that and I take uh, one of my half gallon mason jars, which is, which is clean from the night before. Bring it down here to the stand. Uh, as you can tell, right here's my feed. This is prepared the night before, and I'm gonna show you tonight how I do this. And I take a couple cups of that, and I put it in her, her feed, uh, her milking stand bin. 
And I just let her out and she comes out on her own. She goes right up on the milking stand because that's where her food is. It took her took us about a week to train her on the lead rope uh, to get her up there. But once she knew where it was, she just goes, we just open up the door and she goes right out. Probably the hardest part is keeping Azriel in because Azriel wants to come out too and roam and explore. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that can get her in trouble around here. Uh, one being the road over here, another being some poisonous plants uh, up in our landscaping uh, with the electric fence. So I don't want her roaming around with Evie on the milking stand, so I gotta grab her and put her back in. Um, then I come over and I wash Evie's udder, and then I proceed to milk her. And you can see it doesn't take very long to milk her, probably less than eight minutes for sure. And then when I'm done, uh, I take Evie back in. She knows where to go because she knows she gets another cup of food when she gets back in there. So I open up the gate, go back in, give her a cup of food, uh, give the baby some food, and then I come back in and whatever solution is left in my bucket, I take it and I wash off the stand with it. You can see when I milked her, I let the first couple squirts out. Uh, that's just to make sure she doesn't have mastitis. And so that being on the wood, I want to get that all sterilized so the bleach solution will clean up the, um, the milking stand. I also use this to wash my hands. And you notice that I put a little in a cup. Uh, I use that as the teat dip at the end too. So I'll take that and I'll just put it on her, her teats and that helps. Uh, prevent mastitis. It cleans up all the milk at the end and all any bacteria that may be um, residing in her teats uh, and that way she doesn't get mastitis. So that's my morning milk routine. I'm going to go take this uh, milk back in and filter it and uh, I'll show you what we do around the noontime. All right for filtering my milk I use these six, six and a half inch Kenag filters. I use a half, another half gallon mason jar that's clean. Uh, stainless steel funnel, and uh, just a mesh, um, just a mesh strainer. Take my filter, and I fold it into quarters. And then I just push it inside. And you can see where it kind of overlaps, so I fold that down. Just like that. And then we just filter our milk. Now I've had a lot of people ask me why I use a mason jar to milk into uh, instead of using um, a metal bucket, which a lot of people use. And I started off using um, a small jar, such as this one and then I would fill this up and dump it into here and that's because she was kicking a lot and moving around the stand and I was afraid that uh, if she put her hoof in a bucket I would have lost all that milk but by doing it this way I was able to um, save whatever milk like if she put her hoof in it then I already had some put away in reserve so that was uh, one way that's one reason I use the mason jars now that she's a little bit more accustomed to the milking stand I still use the mason jar but I milk directly into the half gallon the reason for this is I don't have to buy a bucket. There's no reason for me to go out and buy a bucket. I only have one goat right now. So I'm able to uh, milk her directly into this jar and clean it up. I only have one thing to clean. Um, and plus with a narrower mouth, um, it is uh, it, it, there's less chance of dirt and debris getting in the jar. And plus it's just like really cool hand and eye coordination first thing in the morning trying to get it in the hole. Some of you guys may have watched some of my, my earlier uh, milking videos on, what was it, day two or three that I was milking Evie, and she was putting out a full half gallon of milk. Um, her production has gone down quite a bit, and the reason for that is um, mainly due to the heat. With the temperatures up over the 80s, uh, up around 87, up to, into the 90s, um, her milk production has decreased quite a bit. Um, and so I'm kind of playing around a little bit with um, the ratio of protein in her feed and seeing if I can get that increased a little bit. Um, she was down to about five and a half cups. We're almost up to six cups again by increasing her protein a little bit. So we had uh, dropped her protein down to 12% with a 12% sweet feed and now I'm bumping it back up to 16 by adding uh, supplemental barley. Um, just something that I'm slowly adjusting in her diet to see how that affects her milk production. Um, and I think we're, we're on the right path here with this. So I'm gonna take this. Put a lid on it and we're going to put it in the freezer for about an hour and a half. Now the reason we put it in the freezer is to cool it down very quickly. Um, it helps preserve the milk longer 
and after about an hour and a half I just keep it in the regular fridge I don't have any special refrigerators or temperatures after that and it keeps for at least a good four days before it starts to the flavor starts to change a little bit So it's about nine o'clock. Um, I just took the milk out of the freezer, put it in the fridge, and I'm just going to give you a quick little tour here of our little setup. Um, this is basically our, our barn shed, and off the back is where we have the goat shelter. Um, we have our milking stand in here along with all of our other uh, farm tractor garden supplies. This is an old table that we kind of repurposed into uh, goat supplies and chicken supplies um, and this is a, an old shelf that I store all of the goat supplies in and some of the chicken supplies as well so we have our hoof trimming stuff this is up here some paper towels the little cups that you saw me use this morning for the tea dip um, this is for nutritional yeast is for the um, for the ducks and the geese uh, apple cider vinegar we put in everybody's water and food. Back here I have some lice powder for the goats. Uh, we ran into a little bit of a lice issue with the baby and we were dusting her down and it uh, worked great. Um, and here are the minerals that I use for the goats and um, I'll go over that uh, probably later on tonight whenever we do the feed. I also keep the brush up there. Um, over here are all of the feeds that I have for all of the animals. Um, I keep them in trash cans to prevent rodents from eating them. Um, the plastic is not ideal but that's what I had so I keep the chicken feed in that one rather than buying a whole separate can. We're gonna see how long that um, that works until something eats through it but the metal is ideal. And right here is uh, all of our goat feed. I have an old Vitamix measuring cup that I use to measure out the amount for each for the goats. In this trash bin I have uh, barley. This is what I'm using to increase the protein in the feed. This is something experimental that seems to be working so far. And then in here is a giant bag of uh, kelp. And this is a supplement for the goats and for the chickens. Everybody gets killed. This bin here is our black oil sunflower seeds. And uh, again, the goats and the chickens get this. Uh, these two bins on the end are chicken feed. And this here is less Bediza pellets probably saw me talking about this when I first got goats. This is a Korean grass that is supposed to help prevent hookworm. I don't really think it's working. The goats really don't like it. Uh, so I'm just going to work through this bag and I probably will stop using it. Uh, but that's why it's sitting out. I'm just going to use it and then we're done. Uh, really I think it's the copper and the minerals that are going to help prevent uh, the hookworm and a lot of the other parasites. So this is uh, being discontinued. So it's nine o'clock, uh, we're gonna go and we're gonna brush down the goats and we're gonna do a little inspection on them, make, make sure everyone's healthy, make sure they have their food and we're gonna change out their water. Come with me. So it's about this time that I'll brush off the goats. They really like being brushed. Um, they love this brush, this is a great brush. This is a grip fit grooming brush that I got from Jeffers Supply. Uh, when I first got them, come here goats. When I first got them, uh, I wanted to bond with them, and one of the ways of doing that was to brush them out because it's something they really enjoy. And uh, when I come out here to brush them, they'll fight over who gets brushed first. And I try to do Evie first because uh, she is the herd queen, obviously. She's the bigger one, and the only out of the only two that I have. And, and then I'll do Azriel next, but she'll try and push her way in to get brushed. This also helps uh, with all the dry skin and get all the hairs out as well. 
And while I'm brushing her out, <laughs> I'll take the time to check her eyes and make sure that she doesn't have any issues with a hookworm. Make sure they're nice and pink. Then I'll usually come over here and I'll check their hay, make sure that they have enough. Um, pull it forward because they tend to eat little holes in it through the through the cattle panel. And I'll check their minerals. Um, I, they get free choice minerals. Uh, we have kelp in this one. We have um, New Country Organics mineral blend in this one, and we have baking powder or baking soda in this one here. The baking soda is for upset stomach. This is uh, additional minerals if what they're what I'm putting in their food is not enough. And then the kelp has all kinds of uh, health benefits to it. Um, one of which is iodine and a, lot, and a lot of other vitamins as well. So that's really good for them. We give them all free choice on that. I think something that I want to add at some point is to give them just plain old uh, pink salt. And, uh, and so they have just a plain salt to use, but we haven't added that yet. That's something I'll probably do in the future. And it's at this time now that uh, check their water and uh, give them some nice clean water. Now I don't put apple cider vinegar in their water because I put it in their food. And I'll show you that later on. So for those of you who are new to our channel, uh, I have only owned goats since March. So March, April, May, June, about three months I've been a goat owner. Never had goats previously. Uh, if you guys are interested in how I got prepared for goats, I'll leave you a link to our playlist and how we got started and how you can get started if you're interested in getting into goats. Um, but I've only been a goat owner for about three months now and what I purchased was a two-year-old milker and then Azriel here who is currently four months old and uh, both of them are females, they're both Nubians. The reason that I went with Nubians is for the um, the butter fat in her milk and their milk is a little bit richer than some of the other breeds. Um, and for the ears, I mean the ears are awesome. Check out those ears. <laughs> They're very sweet goats. Uh, probably I would say the biggest drawback to Nubians is they are very, very loud, especially when Evie goes into heat. Um, but very sweet goats, absolutely love them. I'm really glad we went with this particular breed. We are currently on about 1.3 acres and uh, in one in goats, we had to find a place to put them. We had this uh, area off to the side of our house, which is behind our shed, that is wooded. And a wooded area is perfect for goats because goats, one, the shade is really good, and two, the trees and all the weed, really. <laughs> and two, the, the shade and uh, all the weeds, uh, the trees and the weeds, they like to eat those. Uh, as you can see, pretty much all the trees are bare from six feet down as they cleared this area out pretty well. Uh, there's lots of room in here for them to play. It's probably about six, six to 7,000 square feet. We have four inch woven wire sheep and goat fencing that goes around the perimeter. And if you guys are interested in how we put up our fence, I'll link to a video on that. Uh, we do not use barbed wire or electric here. Um, and because it's such a small area, we don't have um, H bracing on the corners. And so far, this is working for us. Uh, as for their horns, the, uh, we went with the smaller uh, holes in the fence and that seems to be working just fine as well. We haven't had any escapees. Sometimes they do put their hooves up on the fence, but for the most part, um, they just kind of hang out in here and they enjoy it. It's a nice area for them. Because our area is so small, we do not have the ability to uh, rotate pastures. That's something that I'd like to do if we ever got onto a bigger pasture. I think that's really important for uh, preventing any kinds of uh, worms or anything of the sort like that. Um, we just aren't able to do it right here. So, and this is what we get and um, we're making it work. We do plan on some point of trying to seed in here with uh, some 
a mixture of rye and alfalfa and uh, a couple other grasses uh, so that they can they can eat those and also uh, we want to get a little bit into polling trees which is uh, basically cutting off uh, tree branches live tree branches that are no more than three inches uh, in diameter and giving those to the goats as supplemental feed as well and the reason that that's really good for them is because tree roots go very deep they draw up minerals deep from the earth and that's what goats need goats need extra minerals so we're probably with all the trees around here we're probably going to get into polling at some point with for supplemental feed i just want attention It's about two in the afternoon and I've been cutting up some fruit. Uh, I give the goats the rinds and I give the chickens some of the pulp. So let's go see if they like this. It's five o'clock, it's dinner time. Evie wants her dinner, so we're gonna go um, get the rest of her food and go give it to her. Their food bowls are separated by a couple dishes because they tend to fight over the food bowls and Evie tends to win that battle. So Asriel has just enough time to probably get about a cup or two in um, before Evie's going to inhale all hers and then push her out of the way. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go um, make our grain and our meals for tomorrow. I just rinse that out and the way I make my food is uh, I soak it in um, minerals and in vinegar, apple cider vinegar. And I go by the Pat Colby um, Natural Goat Care book. So what we do is we put half the amount of water in that we're going to put in of grain. And we'll put in a splash of apple cider vinegar. Here are the minerals that I mixed up myself. Uh, it's 6.25 parts dolomite, two parts sulfur, one part cop copper sulfate, and one part kelp. I also put um, a really small amount of borax in there too. Uh, I give a quarter of a teaspoon to the baby and a half a teaspoon to uh, Evie. And I'm just gonna mix that into their water and their feed. So right now I feed uh, Evie about seven or eight cups of grain and then Asriel gets between two and three cups, whatever's left over. Um, I feed the majority to Evie in the milking stand and then as you can see, they each get about a cup when I put Evie back in the morning and then the rest of the food I give to them at night. So I break up what I'm making today between morning and evening. Um, so that's about a total of 10 cups that's broken up between morning and night. Um, I tried doing less and I found that uh, Evie started losing weight and losing condition uh, so it seems to be 10 cups seems to be the right amount and as far as what kind of feed I use um, when I bought 
uh, the goats from the breeder that she was using just a commercial uh, generic sweet feed. It was a 16% goat sweet feed. And I wanted to switch her over to a uh, non-GMO feed. However, our, our local feed mill only does a 12% protein um, sweet feed. And it's for, ho it's for horses and goats. And when I cut her back down to the 12%, I noticed that there was a slight decrease in her milk. So I'm trying to now boost that up by supplementing with um, barley. So what I do is I do six parts barley, four parts, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, six parts sweet feed, four parts barley. So I'll do six cups of the sweet feed and we'll do four and two. I'm going to, I'm divvying up um, their minerals between the grains to make it spread out more. And then we do four cups of the barley. Also put in a couple tablespoons of black oil sunflower seeds, and then for the rest of the minerals, I put that on top. So that makes a half a teaspoon for Evie and a quarter teaspoon for Asriel. So I just put that all together, give it a good shake, and. Uh, this is all ready to go for tomorrow morning. The grains will all swell and nothing will be soggy. It'll just be swollen grains. And just in case uh, something ever happens to me, um, I do have the goat feed mix written on the lid um, so that anybody that has to fill in will know exactly what to add to their feed. All right, so that about does it. That's my daily goat routine. Starts around 6.30 in the morning. Takes me about 10 minutes to milk and feed the goats. I come out around the afternoon, check their eyes, and uh, also um, replace their water as needed and their hay as needed. Uh, and then in the evening, five o'clock, I give them the rest of their grain. You can see they're, uh, they're quite happy with that. And um, that's about it. I'll clean out their stalls on an as-needed basis and uh, check their hooves and clip their nails on an as-needed as basis. If they need any additional medicines or minerals, I do that on an as-needed basis. But really, the whole thing doesn't take very much time at all. It's just spread out throughout the day. Um, if you guys want to see how other people uh, manage their goats, what kind of setup they have, uh, we are, you know, again, a small homestead on one acre. This is just how we do it. This is our setup. If you guys are thinking about doing goats yourself, you can see this is one way of doing it. If you guys are interested in seeing how other goat keepers keep their goats, whether it be small or whether it be a large herd, um, whether it be on a small property or a large property, whether it be someone who's brand new to it like we are or somebody who's more experienced, go check out uh, all these channels below. I'm gonna leave them in the description and you can see what everybody does and you can pick and choose what might work for you. I know I'm really curious to see how some of the other um, farms and homesteads manage their goats. There might be some things that I can pick up on. I'm sure there are. So if you guys like this kind of stuff, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Hot hand-eye coordination and trying to get it into this little hole is kind of fun. <laughs> no.